In this video, I want to show you how you can take a picture that means something to you and turn it into a personal painting that you can give as a gift or even hang up at home. This painting is for my granddaughter Vilma. She just loves her aunt Hannah. These two crazy girls were sitting at my food truck one day, fooling around and then I took a lot of pictures. I then built a background on a canvas on which I then projected the image. From the image I have removed the background and then I have edited it into a shadow image that I can draw after when it is projected onto my canvas. This projector I'm using is costing no more than about $120 and it's a great tool that gives me a fantasillion opportunities to create amazing personal paintings. Let's get started painting personal paintings. Here is what you need. Some kitchen sponges, some stencils, an IT protector, acrylic paint, a canvas, some brushes, a Pasca pen and the image you want to paint. Now let me show you how to do this. To get some exciting effects in my background, I start here by making some dots in one side of my canvas. I dab with a kitchen sponge where I have taken most of the color off again so that it is semi dry. Now my dots are dry and now I need to cover them a little bit so that they get into the background and become less visible. I strive to create a photoshop effect on my paintings so that those who look at them think how did she make that? They may have doubts about whether it is a painting or a print. It's pretty cool to be able to tell people that you've painted this by hand. Most people will be very surprised by it. In the transition between the dots and the white background, I lay a slightly thicker layer of paint. I let the first layer dry and then I give it one more layer so that it looks like my dots come out of a mist. That is a soft and smooth transition between the effect and the rest of the canvas. You just have to keep going until you are satisfied with the result and until you think it looks really nice. Now I'm going to build up my background with these beautiful colors. As you can see, the yellow I use here has no opacity and therefore I'm not worried about my dots disappearing completely. The slightly darker yellow has a little bit more opacity, so I'll start with that in the area outside my dots. If you want more opacity in your colors, you can always throw in a blob of titanium white next to the color and then mix that in. Then it covers better. I start with my third yellow color all the way out on the other side and then I work it in towards the middle. Now it's time to make some effects in my background. Here I have chosen to bring some of the effect from my background into the front. That's why it's the same stencil. I like continuity. It's my plan to wash off some of the yellow color with a damp sponge, but it did not quite turn out that way. Since there is black paint on my stencil, it spreads when the moist sponge dissolves the color residue. So instead of making a lighter dot, I got a half dark dot instead. It's a little bit annoying, since that was not my plan, but I actually think it looks okay, so I choose that it's okay and continue. Alternatively, just wash your stencil or make sure that the paint residue on it is completely cured so that they do not spread. It can easily take 24 hours. To soften the dark spots a little, I take my dark yellow on my damp sponge so that I can put a thin layer of paint over them. Since I have sprayed a little water on the sponge, it dilutes the paint so that it becomes more transparent. Therefore, it does not seem of much, but a little bit of effect it has. I end up mixing a little bit of titanium white in my yellow so it gets a little bit more opacity. So, now my wrong dots are put more into the background, so they are not as disturbing as they was before. Since this painting is for a little girl of 3 years, I have decided to make even more effects with an APC stencil. I think it's fun to make several different effects on top of each other, so that the painting becomes exciting to explore. Therefore, I have found one of my many APC stencils, and I now take the dark yellow and use as a color on the lighter yellow background. I only want you to be able to see the alphabet a bit, and therefore I do not use any wild contrast colors, but I will do that later. Maybe you are sitting right now and thinking, that's a weird alphabet stencil. But it's Danish as I'm from Denmark and therefore it contains the letters A, Ø and O, which are letters we only have in this country. Now you've learned a little bit about Denmark. Most foreign people have a really hard time trying to pronounce those letters. You might try A, Ø and O. Good luck! Now I just continue with my alphabet stencil 
I do a little bit around on my canvas so that it fills my background well up with exciting effects. I mix a little different yellow and white colors. I think that helps to give a little bit of light in the background. Now I want a contrasting color in my background. Therefore I now take a third stencil, this time with old handwriting. A bit like if I wrote a declaration of love for my beloved child and granddaughter. The girls are so beautiful and sweet together, and my granddaughter really looks up to her aunt, who is a perfect role model for her. Okay, back to the picture. I probably just got a little bit carried away by the mood there. <laughs> As I said, I want a little contrast into my image, so it does not become too boring to look at. Therefore, I make a little bit of text here and there with a neon pink color. To spice it up even more, I subsequently make pink dots with another stencil where the dots vary in size. It is always an art in itself to find the balance in when one has gone too far. Less is sometimes more. But I think my picture can easily carry all that activity. Finally, I use the same stencil I started with to preserve the continuity of my painting. Now I want to project my girls over on my background. But as you can see here, there are some distraction that needs to be removed, as I do not want dots on the face of the people I am portraying. The ones in my daughter's forehead might even be allowed to stay or just be less visible, but the dots that are in little Vilma's eye will be way too disturbing, so we cannot see it's her. There should be nothing that can steal focus other than them. It is the girls that is my story. That's why I'm now cleaning up my background. I work in thin semi-transparent layers. That way I can preserve some of the effects if I want to. I end up giving it three coats and almost covering it completely so that the girls step forward and come into total focus of my painting. I have cut a kitchen sponge into smaller pieces to better control it when I paint. Here I have also mixed a little water in the paint to make it a little transparent. I could have stopped after the first layer, as it has already helped a lot of the turmoil behind them. But I chose to give it a more opaque color. Here you can see layer by layer how the effect steps more and more into the background. When you think it looks the way that you want it to, then you can stand in front of your projector to check if it looks proper. If the layer is even, and we also do not want streaks in the white, which then disturbs instead of our background effects. Now I start drawing my picture of the girls onto my canvas. I just draw after the lines as I see them. It is the black I have to paint afterwards. If you have an image in a slightly poor resolution, which is pixelated, so you can see the small squares, then you have to round off your lines and not draw the small squares because it, it will be awful to have to paint it afterwards, it won't be nice to look at either. Here I have just made a small example of what I mean. As you can see, I draw from tip to tip on the small pixels. That way you get the best result.
Okay, here I want to show you two different programs that are totally free and you can upload your pictures with one click and download them with one click and you do not have to sign up. I think this is pretty awesome. The first program is called Remove Background, remove.bg. The other one is called threshold.imageonline.co. Now what you need to do is check out if you have some pictures you imagine you could use for a, for a painting, then you need to remove the background because it can be very disturbing. But first of all, we need to see if the picture is even worth using time on. So what I'm doing is I say upload image here, and then I find my image here. I want to try this out. Now I uploaded my picture, and then I just press this threshold image button. As you can see, it's kind of okay. I would have liked to see the eyes a little bit more, but this is just to give you an idea. You can try out with different pictures you have in your gallery or pictures you take. What you need to be aware of is that the light is all over the place. That you don't have a picture with, with shadows in half the face because then it will only be black over here. So now we need to try to remove this background so that we can see the real picture. Therefore, I go over here in this remove image background and then I upload the same image and I don't even have to do anything it just removes the background for me and now I can download my picture then I go back in here and then I say upload image and then I go to my downloads and I find the image with the clean background I upload it I threshold it and now I can see what I have to work with okay this is the picture I want to use then I just download it into my computer and then I can open it and this is what we have to work with. I think this is pretty smart. Remember this is a free program, you have limited access. So as you can see, this one is very pixelated. As you can see these little squares here, but never mind because we are going to draw as I show you in the course. We draw a straight line out here. We do not draw these pixels like this. Do, 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 do. We just draw from tip to tip so we have a straight line to work with. So this is very usable and I think it's very awesome because it's totally free. You don't even have to give them your email so they're going to spam you and stuff like that. So this is a way you can do it. I think you should try it out. This will give you many possibilities to paint pictures of your loved ones. Remember you can also go online and find pictures of your idols. If you like Johnny Depp, you go Google Johnny Depp. And then you find a picture of him, you download it, and then you try this out. Then you have all these possibilities to paint your idols or your loved ones or whatever, whoever you want, whenever you want it. Okay, I want to show you another option. If you have Word on your computer, you can easily insert a picture. And let's take the same picture as before. I want the one with the clean background. And I take this one. Uh, you can see it's, it's going to be a little bit pixelated because this free program is compressing the picture. If we want a better quality, we need to pay. But for now, this will work. Then you right click and then you say format picture. Then over here, you have this option, press here. And then you have this recolor and you press here and you take the middle one. And now you can scroll on this one to see which threshold you like. Maybe I will get some more eyes here, but then I will get a little bit smaller mouth and you have to work with this and see what you like. And you can go a little bit back and forth here. I'm trying to aim for some light in the eyes. I think I would go with this one. So then you just go and save file and then you save it on your computer. Let's say I wanted to paint somebody else. So I go here and I search for images and then I need to find a picture that is very good of her. Uh, I don't want concert pictures, I want portraits. So maybe we could do this instead, portrait. This is a good one because we have good eyes and we have full light here you can see there's some shadows here in the side this one would be very bad let me show you a bad example save image quickly quit it quit one and i'm just going to save it on the downloads and then i want to take this 
compare with this savings image class bridge two and the downloads yes let's see if we have other options also here we have a lot of shadow so that would be very dark this could also be very good picture okay let's also try this out because I have shadow here let's see what happens this is something you need to practice and you will learn if you try it again and again and again then you will find out on the way what works then I go back to word I delete myself I go on insert picture from file I go to my downloads oh it didn't yeah sometimes that happens it's so irritating then it downloads the whole web page. But that's okay. We can do with these. Let me just make a little space between them. Yes. I right click, format picture, I go over here, and I open this recolor, and I press here. Let's see. We can go for the saturation, maybe a little bit more saturated. And then we can scroll on this one. Here, let me tell you something. I'm going Control, Command C, then I'm going back. I would definitely remove this background in, in Remove Background because it's very disturbing and it makes a very dark picture. But again, let us go back. And then you can scroll on it. You can play with this. If you can abstract for this one, then you can just draw her hair like this. I actually think this is pretty cool of her. I think I would go for this. Let's try this one with the shadow on the eyes. Over here. This one. See, we get... We get it gets very dark around the eyes, but let's try working with it. It's pretty cool anyway. It can definitely be good. I think I would do this, actually. I'm a little bummed because I can't really see the hat. This is making a hole, you know. This is... Um, it's not broken up like here. We have a lot of broken up and it looks like she has a black eye. This looks like the head is making the shadow. So that's very cool. And let's see here. No. I would do this. This is very cool. So you need to try out, find different pictures and then just put them into Word. And you can see right away if this is something you can use. And if it is, Maybe you can go to remove background, you can remove the background if it's disturbing, put it into Word again, or this other threshold uh, image program, and then you can work with that. I think it's so cool. And this is totally free if you already have Word on your computer. So go for it, try it out, and uh, remember, practice makes champion.